everyone will be fearless when they are following to see Christ. Monday, Kuta said, Why am I to the sir? I told the Bhagavan, see Christ, not supreme Lord, see Christ. If anyone who has saved to his Lord has paid and taken shelter and serving him, then nothing, anything, no any problems, no family life, and no material desires, no sense gratification, nothing. Everything will be clear and pure. Udvigna buddhira sadatma bhava. Anyone living since India in mood all the time, trembling mood, and asad atma bhava anit. Everything going, no still fixed. So house, money, land, and relative, everyone they are going. But all is, we have absorbed more to them. Oh, all are mine, my, my house, my wife, my children, my gold, my land, my things. All are mine. My body, I am this body, all are mine. This is called family situation. Ignorance. All ignorance will be finished when worship to Sri Krishna. This is the best way. If anyone going and following this Sanatana religion, if blind, closed eyes and running away, never falling. And if sometimes sleeping, not sleeping, sleeping. 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 sleeping, so no any problems. Salpam asya dharma asya trayate mahato bhaya. If anyone following, also little, very short, little sanatana dharma. If someone accepting, oh, this religion is best religion, very good things. Oh, I accept this. If helping, if sadhu is there serving Lord Sri Krishna, if Anyone serve him to sadhu, give him some donations to sadhu, then everyone's life will be happy. And all ign ignorance, all blindness, everything will be finished. This is the best way. Bhayam dityat abhi nivesatasya ishad api tasya vipare jayo smriti tan maya to budha avaje tvam Bhaktai kai sam Guru Devu Tattva. Before, Sri Kavirishi told, If anyone, Kaena Bacha, Manasaira Indriya Iruva, Body, Mind, Senses, Heart, Knowledge, Everything, and in his work, all things of heart to Sri Krishna. Oh Sri Krishna, you are mine. I am your one person. Please accept. In this way, his life, his energy, everything of her to see Christ. So Narada is also before spoke to best. If anyone living in family life, all things of her to see Christ, only his most to see Christ. They have no family situations, no blindness, nothing. And anyone uh, living in sense, in a mood, then they are going hell. So, Kaya Nubhacha, Kone Sairi Indriya, Buddha Atmana, Vano Sutta Sasavava. Everything, they are natures. So, they are doing different, different work. But all things they have had to Sri Krishna. Whole life for Sri Krishna. Whole energy for Sri Krishna. Then their life is successful life. So, there is no any problem. Karoti jad jad sakalam parasmai narayana iti samarpaitva. All things of heart to Narayana, of heart to Sri Krishna, that their life is successful life. Bhayam dityat abhinive satasyat. When we have desire to material life, a sense in enjoying life, so we want to happy by the material things. So at that time, we are calling in influence. Then we are afraid. We are afraid for myself. My body is never will be lost. Never die. My relative, 
sons, children, and wife, and any others, husband. So everyone, they will be still fixed, and all the time they are living with me. They never left me, and money, always will be fixed. In this way, but always going, nothing, not facing. So, bhayam dityad abhinivesh tasyad. When we have absorbed mood in family situation, sense enjoying mood, that time fear coming. We have it. When we forget to see Krishna, that time we are falling in ignorance, in maya. Then I can't understand what can I do? What is my necessity? What is my duty? Then we forget all things. So, ordinary life, so we are going to school and study some, something study there. Then we learn, then we are making job, business, any kinds and making money, taking sense, enjoy, this is our life. Kim Kartabha Bimura. Then we forget all things. Where you go? Where will be happiness? Where I, I live? So any kind of problems come in. Then Maya to Buddha, Aujipa, all our ignorance. See, Kavirishi spoke, eat, intelligent man, then you must follow to Gurudev. Buddha, Buddhiman, Purus, intelligent man. Aujitvam, Bhaktai Kaisam, Gurudev, Tatma. Ekaya isam bhajit, ekaya bhaktiya, only one more pure bhakti must follow the pure bhakti. And this bhakti you can start to worship to Sri Krishna and start to Guru Padma. <coughs> we never seen Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. How is beautiful and how is we never seen. But we see Gurudev. So Gurudev is our heart, our soul, our life. Every, everyone, anyone can serve to Gurudev. He is our Devata. He is present here. So Sri Krishna said to Gurudev. So they are coming more, more kindness, very great merciful. When Sri Krishna came, he killed so many demons, gave liberation. But anyone, they not become devotees and then cannot serve to Sri Krishna. Sri Krishna killed them. But Gurudev, more, more kindness, merciful, so give him more kindness. Anyone, mind, heart, body, everything changed their life and they are serving to Sri Krishna. So Gurudev, our heart, our delta, our soul, everything. So in Srimad Bhagavatam, so these things serve to Gurudev. Tate Krishna Bhaje Kare Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spoke these things. Brahmanda Brahmite Kono Bhagya Vanjeev Guru Krishna Prasade Pai Bhakti Lata Bij Tate Krishna Bhaje Kare Guru Na Seva Maya Jal Chute Pai Sri Krishna Charan Vaseb to Sri Krishna Sarvem Guru De Then will be pure. Otherwise no purity. So, dear all things in this world. So we see everything ignorance. Always we are thinking mindly and seeing dream. So many dreams in our life. We are thinking so many things. So now we have some money and next day will be more money and then will be I am will be king and president. So many things we are thinking. But when dream finish then nothing. Oh, we are sleeping on the bed. <laughs> so, in this way, so we are thinking so many dreams in our life, but nothing, also false, false things. Then anyone must follow these things. Sri Kabir spoke and Sukhdev Goswami spoke these things. Sri Nam Subhadra Ratham Janmani karmani cha jani loke Gitaani namani tadarthakani Gayan bilajyo bichare dasangya How can lead? How can do? 
they are processed, everything. Spoke these things. Srinan Subhadrani Rathangyopani. Hearing Krishna Gatha Rathangyopani. He is not taking now Sudarshan's wheels, but he took chariot wheels. And he went to, he wants to kill Bhishma Pitava, but he does not want. Only showing to every, oh, you were throwing me arrows. So at that time he took Sudarshan's yeah, chariot wheels. And he's broken his promise and he said his devotee's promise. Bhishma Bhitama told, if I am showing and I defeated you and you you are taking weapons, then I am son of Ganga Putra Santanu. Santanu. Son of Santanu Mara. So then, Bhishma Pitamo fighting, fighting so much. At once, Sri Krishna took Chariya and he, and he broke on his promise. And he said to him, and he runs away. So Sri Nanda Subhadrani, all age, he is giving respect to devotee. He is Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. Very kindness, very merciful. So he is past times Lila. Very beautiful Lila. Sri Nara Subhadrani Rathanga Pane Janmani Karmani to his birth. How he took birth and how he did Lila, past times Lila. Everything chanting, hearing, and speaking, and remind others. And Remember to Sri Krishna's Lila. In this way, Janmani Char Karmani Char Gitani Namani Jadartha Kani Tadartha Krishna Govinda Murari Mukunda Madhusudan Madan Mohan Govinda Damodar Gopinath Padmana. So many names and there have so many Lila's. So in this way, can remember, can meditate his sweetness Lila, chanting his name and Speaking and hearing, meditating in this way, Gayan Bilajyo Bichari, the Sangha singing, and Bilajyo, let all shyness, all pride, no need pride, no need jealousy, no need shyness, so everything left. And Gayan, Gayan Bilajyo Bichari, the Sangha, no need material, Vishay um, mood, their associations, no need their association. Where is living with sadhu and serve him to sadhu, Guru Pad Padma and following this bhakti do. Then very quickly, evam brata sapriya nama kirtya. This is our life, this is our bhav, this is our sankalva. In my life we are chanting Sri Krishna's name and meditating to his sweetness lila. In this way, evam brata sapriya nama kirtya. Jatanu Rado, Druta Chitta Uchai, then attachment mood coming, very deep mood, weeping, falling tears, shaking body, trembling body. That time, so always meditating in Sri Krishna, pure mood, pure heart, no any problems. In this way, Druta Chitta Uchai, Gayati, Roti, Rodati. Sometimes singing, sometimes weeping, sometimes calling to Sri Krishna. In this way, Loka Vaiji left all family desires, all desires, only one more to Sri Krishna. In this way, this is pure bhakti and pure life. Everyone must follow these things. Then everyone's lives will be happy. Then slowly, slowly more progress, bhakti, bhakti manifesting in our heart and other way renunciations and so experience come, more more experience, more more they are feeling Sri Krishna's sweetness, Lila. In this way bhakti more will be progress. Other side, other way, itya chutangri bhajatonu vrittya bhaktir viraktir bhagavat prabodha. 
भवंती वै भागवत राजन तत परम शांति मुपैति साक्षात then para shanti everyone will be peace everyone will be happy in this way following to bhajan sadhan bhakti yog and sarvam to shri krishna worshiping shri krishna sarvam guru pad pad this is our process bachaaru patru vishesh kar sindhu hari satya satya anandaram so we see that महाराज जनक आस्ट व्हाट इज भागवत धर्म एंड देन ही टोल्ड दैट ही एक्सप्लेन द प्रोसेस ऑफ भक्ति इज दैट फर्स्ट गो टू नन डिफरेंट फ्रॉम कृष्ण गुरु पाद पद्म सर्व हिम and with pranipa dandot prana you should ask then he will teach you all these things especially now we have forgotten krishna and for this we are thinking that this body am and all other relatives are mine and for them oh so much fear comes so the process is that first go to guru and then learn how to please krishna and then you can go so he is telling also <coughs> that <coughs> a person who will hear who will hear All these things, bhakti paresha nu bhau, virakti anyatra chaistri ke kala, patpadmanasya, yathasnata shutushti pushti khudupaya. If anyone is serving Krishna, doing bhakti, shonang kirtanang Vishnu smarang and all these things, taking shelter in the lotus feet of his Guru Dev, then three things automatically come: bhakti. परेशानुभव रियलाइजेशन ऑफ सुप्रीम लॉ एंड डिटैचमेंट डिटैचमेंट फ्रॉम वर्ल्डली डिजायर्स मस्ट कम इफ यू आर हियरिंग एंड प्रैक्टिसिंग भक्ति जो बट थ्री थिंग्स आर नॉट कमिंग नो रियलाइजेशन ऑफ सुप्रीम लॉ नो विरक्ति फ्रॉम दिस वर्ल्ड नो डिटैचमेंट कमिंग देन फॉट इज दैट There is some loop holes. I think of these loop holes are in all. All. Try to repair. Try to repair. Anyone who is serving Krishna, practicing Nodha Bhakti or Panchada Bhakti or Valli Hari Nam, then three things are bound to come. All tattva gyan will come. and surely detachment from worldly things and desires must come krishna name is very powerful but not coming then we should tell fai on me fai no so he told the what kavi has told in brief now again maharaj janak asked oh i want to know that a man who is practicing bhakti yog how he is acharan behavior behavior to others and by what symptom we can know that he is really a bhakta please tell me and then hari you watch hari you try to hear all these things i have never spoke about this explain all this i want to know uh, i want to what to explain explain you all that 11 canto 
very very important, important. <laughs> this and after that Uddhashambad will come. Then you will have surely qualification to enter in Dasamashkanta. How a man can reach in 10th canto? Oh, this is the doorway of all these things. Om Jnanati Mirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Jina Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha First of all, I'm offering my Dandavat Pranams to the lotus feet of my beloved Gurudev Nityalila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Asto Tarasata Sri Shumad Isi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada and secondly, I'm offering my equal Dandavat Pranams and my Shraddha, Shraddha Pushpanjali to the lotus feet of my beloved Guru Devs, Nitilila Pravishtom, Vishnupad, Asto, Tarasata Sri Shila, Bhakti Rakshak, Sridhar Goswami Maharaj. He can come. And Om Vishnupad, Asto, Tarasata Sri Shila, Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. And also to the lotus feet of all my uh, beloved God brothers and God sisters all the Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis, friends and guests who have come to this most aus auspicious Bhagavad Kata assembly. So Srila Gurudev is now revealing the importance of the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam to us. As he told, he has given us so much understanding of the pastimes of Krishna in 10th canto. But without understanding the 11th canto and the teachings that are here, it will not be possible to fully enter into the pastimes of Krishna. Because here, the actual activities of pure Bhagavat Dharma are explained. And how a devotee should execute his spiritual life. What are the necessary qualifications what is the behavior of a Vaishnava? How does he live? How does he perform his devotional practices? How does he become detached from this uh, gross, materialistic, illusory happiness of this world and take shelter of the eternal happiness of service to the lotus feet of Krishna? So in this conversation given in 11th canto, these Navayogendras, these nine uh, very great sages are answering the questions of Maharaj Nimi. And these questions are very relevant for all who want to enter into Bhagavad Dharma. So if we study this conversation very minutely, then we can gain so much from it. Now Maharaj Nimi is asking the question to these nine Yogendras and so far uh, Kavi Rishi, he has answered. Now Havi Rishi will begin to answer the second question, second group of questions that Maharaj Nemi is asking. So he is asking, now please tell me in greater detail about the devotees of the Supreme Lord. What are the natural symptoms by which I can distinguish between the most advanced devotees and those that are on the middle level, and those who are neophyte, beginning level. What are the typical religious activities of a Vaishnava? And how does he speak? And specifically, please describe those symptoms and characteristics by which the Vaishnavas become dear to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So now in the beginning of his answer, Sri Havi Rishi, he begins to explain the definition of the three different categories of Vaishnavas, beginning with topmost, Maha Bhagavat Vaishnava. This Maha Bhagavat Vaishnava has a very specific symptom by which he can be recognized, and that is Sarvabhuteshu Yakpashyed, uh, Bhagavad Bhavam Atmanaha. Bhutani Bhagavat Yatman Yesha Bhagavat Uttama. 
Bhagavat Uttama means topmost amongst all the Bhagavats, all the devotees of the Lord. So here he's saying, Sarva Bhuteshu Yak Pashyad. What is the vision of a Mahabhagavat Vaishnava? He sees Bhagavat Bhavam Atmanaha. What is there in his heart? What is his own transcendental moods of divine praying, loving devotion to the Supreme Lord? Wherever he looks, he also sees that in all living beings. Uh, he, when he looks here or there at the animate and inanimate objects of this world, he sees his Supreme Lord, his worshipable deity everywhere by dint of his own moods, his own divine praying. Just like the highest example of the Braja Gopis. In the Srimad Bhagavatam 10th Canto, the Braja Gopis, they are glorifying the Venugit, the flute song of Krishna. They are telling there how much they see all the different living beings in Vrindavan who are so much attracted to the sound of Krishna's flute. Even the inanimate objects like the rivers, like the clouds, and all the uh, forest animals like the deer, like the birds and the trees. They are seeing all of those living beings having the same mood of deep attraction to Krishna that they have, the same moods of anurag that they have in their hearts. They see that in the other living beings. This is the symptom of a Mahabhagavat. He does not only see the external bodies, but he sees within every living being the eternal soul who is part and parcel of Krishna. And he also sees that all the living beings are situated in their eternal service to Krishna. One thing more. Gopis are not Uttam Mahabhagavat. You should not give this example. But you should give an example of Maharaj, uh, Prahlad Maharaj. They are also of Uttam Bhagavad. Ah, he is Uttam Bhagavad. But gopis are not. They are worshipable of Uttam, Uttam, Maha, Uttam, Maha, Uttam. <laughs> so we cannot give this example. But Acharyas are giving in the purport. Ah, yes, <laughs> Try to understand what. Yes, yes. Here he is, here he is defining Uttam Bhagavad. Yes. So, so the Uttam Bhagavats, like Sri Prahlad Maharaj. <laughs> so, Prahlad Maharaj, you all know, most of you know, how Sri Prahlad Maharaj, he saw his worshipable Lord everywhere in everything. Therefore he was always completely peaceful and satisfied, even in the face of danger and death, as his father was trying to kill him. His father in so many ways was trying to destroy his own son, take his life. But Prahlad Maharaj was completely shanta, completely peaceful, because of his knowledge, because of his deep devotion to his Lord and Master, his Ishtadev, Lord Narayan, who he sees in everyone and in everything. So in this way, the highest devotee, actually he is always situated in that consciousness, in that very high stage of consciousness, but he sometimes comes down to a level in which he discriminates and he sees living beings within this world how they are not engaged in the eternal service of the Lord. And then he comes down to very uh, madhyam uttam level and he preaches out of compassion for the conditioned souls in this world. So the intermediate, the madhyam adhikari Vaishnava, he is uh, given the description here, uh, Havi Rishi is describing that you can recognize the symptoms of a madhyam adhikari by the way that he deals with four different categories. Ishure tadadineshu, bali sheshu disatsucha, 
प्रेम मैत्री कृपा पेक्षा सो मध्यम अधिकारी he sees Ishwara. Ishwara means the su supreme personality of Godhead. He recognizes his worshipable Lord. And toward his worshipable Lord, he has pure love and devotion. Prema. Although the word prem is used here, of course the Madhyam Adhikari has not yet achieved the stage of prem. But prem in a general sense is used here, that he has, he has loving devotion to the Supreme Lord. Ishuretad Adineshu. Then Adineshu means the pure devotees, the devotees of the Lord. Uh, he has Maitri, very great affection and friendship mood toward the devotees of the Lord. He does not have any envy in his heart toward anyone, and he offers his respectful obeisances to all the devotees and makes friendship with them. Prema Maitri Kripa. Then Bali Sheshu. Bali Sheshu means like the innocent, childlike masses of people in this material world who do not have any transcendental knowledge. They cannot even, they do not even know that they are eternal souls, that they are not this material body. They are suffering within this world of birth and death repeatedly for millions of lives. So the Madhyam Adhikari has kripa, compassion for them. And therefore, he fully absorbs himself day and night in following the instructions of Guru and trying to liberate all of these jiva souls within this world. So that is Kripa. And finally, Bali Sheshu Dusatsu. Dusatsu means those who are atheists, who are actually envious of the Supreme Lord. They deny his existence. Uh, or they deny his eternal personal form, like Mayavad. Uh, they say that you are God, I am God, we are all God. We can merge into his existence and become God. All of these very fallacious theories and uh, tendencies of the conditioned soul to be separate from the Supreme Lord, very atheistic tendencies. So how does the Madhyam Adhikari deal with them? Prema Maitri Kripa Peksha. Apeksha means he neglects them. He does not uh, make the attempt to preach to them. They have no faith. They have no attraction. Therefore, he stays apart, separately from them. But actually, it does not mean he is not giving them mercy. He is also trying to correct them by neglecting them. So in this way, a Madhyam Adhikari, devotee, is understood by these symptoms. Uh, so then the third class devotee is also described, the Kanishta. That the third class devotee uh, is said that he has some kind of shraddha, some kind of faith. Archayam eva haraye pujam yak shraddaye hate. Natat bhakteshu chanyeshu sa bhakta prakrita smrita. Archayam Evaharaye. He has uh, Shraddha in worshipping the deity form of the Lord in the temple. He keeps uh, this kind of mood in his heart. He will go to the temple, he will offer obeisances, he will pray to the deity of the Lord. He will become devoted in this uh, area of bhakti. But he does not understand Archayam Evaharaye Pujam Yak Shraddhaye Hate. Natad bhakteshu chanyeshu. He has not developed his vision yet to be able to see who are the devotees of the, of the Lord. How to honor the bhaktas. How to honor the different levels and different classes of devotees. How to properly worship the, even the Mahabhagavad devotees. He doesn't know how to interact. And also within the material world, he can become affected. His shraddha is komala. It is uh, soft, uh, pliable. So if he associates with persons who are advocating some other type of philosophy, this ism, that ism, new age isms, uh, then what happens to him? Oh, he starts to believe that. He can deviate very easily from the path of pure bhakti. So the third class devotee is described in this way. And uh, by uh, remaining in the third class position is somewhat dangerous. 
because in that position, not being able to recognize the position of the Vaishnavas, then he can easily commit Vaishnav Aparad. Vaishnav Aparad means offense against the lotus feet of a devotee. And there are different levels of devotees, especially if one commits an offense against the lotus feet of a Uttam Vaishnava, a Mahabhagavat devotee. Oh, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has explained this is the mad elephant offense. Hati Mata. Because just like an elephant comes into a garden, uh, if the elephant comes into a garden where there are small little plants and, and trees beginning to grow, oh, it is a very dangerous situation for those plants and trees because the elephant will crush them or uproot them with his trunk if he is a mad elephant. So if one allows this tendency to criticize, to perform Vaishnav Ninda, to uh, perform such offenses and blasphemy against devotees of the Lord, even those who are in Madhyam level or even Kanishta level, oh, then there is reaction, very severe reaction. What will happen? Even his duration of life, all of his wealth, his health, all of his good fortune, but especially his Bhakti, Lata, his creeper of devotion will be severely harmed. So therefore, so many warnings are given there in Shastras. So many descriptions are given of, devote, of persons who have ma made such mistakes before and offended Vaishnavas. Just like, for example, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, there is the, or Chaitanya Bhagavat, the story of Devananda Pandit is given there. Devananda Pandit was a very great uh, scholar of Srimad Bhagavatam. And in Nabadvit Dham, he had many students. And they were coming to his classes. And he was also reciting Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto. And he was telling uh, so many shlokas that were describing the beauty and pastimes of Krishna. And by and by, as he was uh, sitting with this assembly, the great, great pure devotee of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sri Srivas Thakur, uh, came into that assembly. And when he came into the assembly, oh, he sat down very inconspicuously in the rear of the assembly and he was hearing. But because he's a Maha, Maha Bhagavat, topmost, actually he's incarnation of Narada Muni in Chaitanya Lila. So Sri, Sri, Sri Vas Thakur was hearing these verses and because of his great level of pure devotion and praying, oh, he became overwhelmed. He went very deep into devotional trance and so many ecstatic symptoms came in his body. Tears and trembling uh, and crying like this. But the students of Devananda Pandit, they saw him and they thought, who? Who is this person? Who? Oh, he's disturbing our assembly. Oh, we must remove him. Uh, we should uh, remove him from the assembly so that our, our teacher will not be disturbed in his discourses. So they took Srivas Thakur, who was not even aware, he was oblivious to his external surroundings, and they picked him up and placed him outside of the assembly. Very, very great offense. But Devananda Pandit, who was reciting Srimad Bhagavatam, he did not stop the students from doing this. And uh, because of this, Later on, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu completely rejected Devananda Pandit. And he fell into a very, very miserable condition. And he was completely devoid of all happiness. All of his good fortune in life diminished. And finally, by the uh, help of another great devotee of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, Miniketana? Now, Varkeshwara Pandit, he helped Devananda Pandit to understand what offense he had committed. And some years later, after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had taken sannyas and again returned to Nabadweep Dam one final time, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in the assembly of millions and millions of people who came to see him. And in that assembly, there were so many persons who were previously offensive toward Mahaprabhu. And here now they were begging for forgiveness and Mahaprabhu was forgiving all of their offenses. Devananda Pandit was there and when he came to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he said, I will forgive you if you bow at the lotus feet of Srivas Thakur and beg forgiveness from him. And therefore Devananda Pandit went and 
fell at the feet of Shiva's Thakur. But of course, Shiva's Thakur, being a pure Mahabhagwa, he doesn't accept any offense. He never considers that anyone has offended him. This is their nature, that they are just as humble as a blade of grass, more tolerant than a tree. They are the personification of humility. But yet, Devananda Pandit begged him, and Shiva's Thakur embraced him, and then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted don't go, him. Don't go beyond the subject. Otherwise, so many things to speak. More shlokas. More shlokas. <laughs> so, in this way, Indriya Prana Mano Dhyan, Jo. So, and after describing these three different categories of Vaishnavas, now, Havi Rishi begins to explain more about how the Vaishnava lives, what are his symptoms. He says, even while engaging his senses in contact with their objects, one who sees this whole world as the energy of Lord Vishnu is neither repelled nor elated. He is indeed the greatest amongst the devotees. Dehendri Dehendriya prana mano diyam yo janmapya yakshud bhaya tarsha kritchai samsara dharmair avimukya mana smritya harer bhagavata pradana. Within the material world, one's material body is always subject to birth and to decay. Similarly, the life airs, the prana within one's body, becomes harassed by hunger and thirst. But the mind is always very anxious, full of anxiety. The intelligence hankers for that which cannot be obtained. And all of the senses are ultimately exhausted by the constant struggle in this material nature. But a person who is not bewildered by the inevitable miseries in this material world, material existence, and who remains aloof from them simply by remembering the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he is to be considered Bhagavat Pradhan, the foremost devotee of the Lord. So a pure devotee of the Lord is never irritated or agitated by any circumstances within this world. Even a devotee who has come to the stage of Uttam Adhikari and reached Bhav Avasta, he has nine symptoms that are visible within. Kshantir, Vyarta Kalatvam, Viraktir, Mana, Shunyata. Kshantir, he's always. Explain other slopes. Okay. He's always very tolerant of every situation. No Kamu Karma Vijanam. Yes, Kama Karma Vijanam. Yasya Chaitasi Sambhava. Vasudevaika Nilaya. Savai Bhagavatottama. One who has taken exclusive shelter of the Supreme Lord Vasudev, Vasudev becomes free from all fruitive activities, from all karmas, which are based on material lust. Kama, karma, bijana. Based upon the seed of material desires within this world. So someone who has taken exclusive shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord, all these bijas, all these seeds of desire, material desire to perform even sinful or pious activities, they become completely destroyed. In fact, one who has taken shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord is freed from even the desire to enjoy material sense gratification. Plans for enjoying sex life, social prestige, and money, they cannot develop within his mind. And thus, he is considered Bhagavat Uttama, a pure devotee of the Lord on the highest platform. Then, na yasya janma karma bhyam na varnashrama jati bhi sajjate smin aham bhavo dehe vaisa hare priya. Birth in an aristocratic family and the execution of austere and pious activities, they certainly cause a person to take pride in himself. And similarly, if one enjoys a prestigious position within society, 
because his parents are highly respected members of the Varnashram social system, then one becomes even more infatuated with himself. But if, despite these excellent material qualifications, one does not feel even a tinge of pride within himself, he is to be considered the dearmost servitor of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. When a devotee gives up the selfish conception by which he thinks, this is my property and that is his property. When he gives up this selfish, selfish conception and when he is no longer concerned with the pleasures of his own material body, or he is indifferent to the discomforts of others, then he becomes fully peaceful and satisfied. He considers himself simply one among all the living beings, which are equally part and parcel of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So such a satisfied Vaishnava, is considered to be at the highest standard of pure devotion. The lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead are sought even by the greatest of demigods, such as Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, who have all accepted the Supreme Personality of God as their life and soul. <clears throat> A pure devotee of the Lord can never forget those lotus feet in any circumstance. He will not give up his shelter at the lotus feet of the Lord for a single moment, indeed, not even for half a moment. Even in exchange, for the benediction of ruling and enjoying the opulence of the entire universe. Such a devotee of the Lord, he is to be considered the best among the Vaishnavas. Bhagavata Uru Vikramangrisaka Nakamani Chandrikaya Nirastata Pe Hridikatam Upashidatam Punasa Prabhavati Chandra Ivoditeir Katapa. How can the fire of material suffering continue to burn the hearts of those who worship the Supreme Lord? The Lord's lotus feet have performed innumerable heroic deeds, and the beautiful nails on his lotus feet resemble valuable jewels. The effulgence emanating from those nails resembles cooling moonshine, for it instantly relieves the suffering within the heart of a pure devotee, just as the appearance of the moon's cooling light relieves the burning heat of the sun. Vishrijati hridayam na yasya sakshad, darir avasab hitol pyagau ganasha, pranaya rasanaya dritangri padma, Sabhavati Bhagavata Pradana Ukta. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is so kind to the conditioned souls that if they call Him by speaking His holy name, even unintentionally or unwillingly, they call Him by speaking His holy name, then the Lord is inclined to destroy innumerable sinful reactions in their hearts. Therefore, when a devotee who has taken shelter of the Lord's lotus feet chants the holy name of Krishna with genuine love, then the Supreme Personality of Godhead can never give up the heart of such a devotee. One who has thus captured the Supreme Lord within his heart is to be known as Bhagavat Pradhan, the most exalted devotee of the Lord. Amen. If anyone is telling that I am Mahabhagavata, you should not have trust that he is Mahabhagavata. 
यू शुड नो ऑल दिस सिम्टम्स ऑफ महाभागवत इफ दिस सिम्टम्स आर नॉट देयर वनली ही इज स्पीकिंग सो मच एंड ही हैज रिमेंबर्ड ऑल द होल दिस टॉक ऑफ भागवत उपनिषद गीता एवरीथिंग बट येट ही इज नॉट उत्तम भाग परहैप्स ही इज नॉट इवन कनिष्ठ अधिकारी सो वी शुड बी केयरफुल फ्रॉम देम इफ ए पर्सन बाई दिस वे सर्प कृष्ण एंड गुरुदेव then any kind of worldly desire will not come surely hmm? even he will not think that this is mine this is her everything he is some darshi equal to all hmm? and then krishna comes in their heart by their high class of love and affection they bind krishna that you cannot go from our heart and he is captured there so always you should try to be like that and to but if this is the door to the 10th canto why is it after the 10th canto agar ye 10th skanda ka pravesh dwar hai to 11th skanda mein kyon rakha gaya baad mein kyon rakha gaya hai sadhan you should know how can do what is krishna prem and how brajbashi love krishna so you should know your highest goal without knowing goal you cannot practice so first we should know our goal of life goal of our sadhan bhajan and then how to achieve oh this 11 kind one good kirtan Jai Jai 